In this episode, you will discover the 10 most beautiful gardens in Europe. They are not by order of preference but by alphabetic order. They also may be all among the most beautiful gardens in the entire world. Why? Because with all due respect to other cultures, the Europeans excelled at creating scenic, aesthetically pleasing green spaces. However, before we begin, I'd like to ask a small favor. If you enjoy this episode, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Baboli Gardens, Florence, Italy. The Baboli Gardens in Florence are more akin to an outdoor museum, and they serve as inspiration for several well-known European gardens. The Medici family bought the property and commissioned Niccolo Pericoli to develop the region in the early 16th century. Pericoli worked on it until his death, and his work was finished by Bartolomeo Ammanati. Later, still in the 16th century, Cosimo de' Medici bought the gardens and decided to establish their new ducal residence in the Pitti Palace, an impressive nearby edifice. Kokenhof Gardens, Netherlands. Kokenhof Gardens is a must-see attraction in the Netherlands for anyone who enjoys flowers. The gardens are 32 hectares in size and feature 7 million tulip bulbs. They also have a castle, a clog museum, a maze, and four separate pavilions for flower exhibits and expositions. Oh, and there's a windmill as well. If you have the time, you can climb it and enjoy a view of the list tulip fields. Of course, this is not a winter attraction. The garden is most beautiful in late April or early May and can be reached from both Amsterdam and Leiden. The flower beds are timed to correspond with the various bulb flowerings to ensure blooms throughout the park's eight-week season. Three bulbs are planted in each location to ensure consistent bloom. For the first three weeks, the shallowest bulb will bloom, followed by the subsequent layers. Many consider these gardens to be the most spectacular in the world, and nearly 1.5 million tourists visit each year, with foreigners accounting for 80% of the visitors. Parc de la Ciutadella, Barcelona, Spain. Parc de la Ciutadella, Barcelona's greenest park, provides a peaceful respite amid the city's bustle, a metropolis that is also one of the cheapest destinations to fly to in Europe, as we revealed in another episode. The ideal location for those looking to unwind for the afternoon, refuel their batteries and take a deep breath. This lovely park, which includes the Catalan Parliament and the Museum of Natural Science and Geology, is a popular spot for picnics and long walks. Many native Mediterranean plants and trees thrive in the 5-hectare green space. One could argue that I should have included Barcelona's more well-known Parc Güell instead of Parc de la Ciutadella. I agree that Parc Güell is one of the most architecturally appealing parks in the world, but we all know that its fame stems from the magnific masterworks of Antony Gordy displayed there, not from the green area itself. Saxon Gardens, Warsaw, Poland. The Saxon Gardens in Warsaw were once a sprawling complex that included a church, a palace, and other structures. It is one of the nicest places in the Polish capital. Until World War II, when everything, or nearly everything, was destroyed. The garden's oldest section was built in the 16th century and opened to the public in 1727. It was originally a Baroque French-style park, but it was restored in the 19th century and transformed into a romantic English-style landscape park. The Marconi Fountain, one of the most beautiful attractions in the gardens, is near the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, one of the few pre-war structures still standing. The fountain can be seen from almost anywhere in the gardens, including the main square. The Marconi Fountain and the Saxon Gardens are also on the 2.5-mile Road of Kings, Tract Krylevsky, which connects the Willenau Palace and the Royal Castle. Schönbrunn Gardens, Vienna, Austria The Schönbrunn Palace was the main summer residence of the Habsburg rulers, the family that once ruled the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Europe's second-largest state, just after Russia. The gardens, which feature long, tree-lined passageways, are among the most beautiful in Europe. A large palm house was built in the gardens in 1882, creating a tropical environment for visitors. The park is massive, with various sections reflecting the various concepts and styles of the Baroque era. The Great Parterre leads from the palace and is divided into eight sections, including the Crown Prince Garden, the Orangery Garden, and the Botanical Garden. You can also explore the Gloriette, a structure with a sculpture that overlooks the garden, during your visit. 
Empress Maria Theresa decided that the Gloriette should glorify Habsburg power and the just war, a war carried out out of necessity and leading to peace. It was destroyed during World War II, but it had already been restored by 1947. Versailles Gardens, Versailles, France. The lawns, parterres, and statues in this 17th century garden are meticulously kept. In addition to the sophisticated fountains, more on that below, there are five greenhouses filled with orchids and other plants around the area. It took almost 40 years to build and is now one of the world's largest open-air sculpture museums. The gardens were designed by André Le Notre, a notable landscape designer who was a favorite of King Louis XIV. They were devoted to the king's wish to display his magnificent residence. Due to the limited amount of rooms that may be seen in the palace, the gardens are frequently regarded as Versailles' main attraction. Many consider this to be one of Europe's most beautiful gardens, with the brilliant hues of spring bringing out the best in the blossoming plants. The fountains, which date back to the reign of Louis XIV and still utilize much of the same hydraulic network as during the Ancien Regime, help to distinguish these royal gardens. Villa d'Est Gardens, Tivoli, Italy. The Villa d'Est Gardens are a must-see destination located near Rome. The gardens are currently a state monument and a UNESCO World Heritage they are known for their Italian Renaissance style and numerous fountains. From the top of a hill, you may get a panoramic view of Rome and Tivoli. The garden's mystical and romantic beauty is accentuated by a plethora of fountains. Water features, which have played a part in the design and arrangement of the garden, are one of the garden's jewels. The Owlet Fountain, which plays organ music, is possibly the most well-known water feature. Canals and waterfalls abound at the hundred fountains. All of these distinctive elements add to the allure of visiting the Villa d'Est Gardens. Château de Villandry Gardens, Villandry, France. The Loire Valley is regarded as France's garden, and the Château de Villandry is the most spectacular of them. The early 1500s saw the construction of the Château de Villandry. It was one of the last Renaissance-era chateaux on the Loire. The gardens, which had been destroyed in the 19th century, were rebuilt in 1906 in keeping with the chateau's style. The grounds cover nine hectares and include six unique areas, a water garden with ponds and fountains, an ornamental garden with elaborate patterns filled with different flowers depending on the season, and a vast vegetable section. Volksgarten, Vienna, Austria. That is the second garden from Vienna, Austria's capital, on our list, and for good reason, the city that gave the world brilliant minds like Mozart, Strauss, Haydn, and Schubert could not disappoint in the art of gardening. Make time to see the Volksgarten, a park whose name translates to People's Garden. It's a section of the equally magnificent Hofburg Palace, which I visited several years ago. Because it was winter, I was unable to fully appreciate the garden's splendor. This park, built on the site of Napoleon's fortifications, has fountains and, in the middle, the neoclassical Theseus Temple by Pietro di Nobile, finished in 1821. A coffee shop, erected between 1820 and 1823, is located on the premises. Johann Strauss I and Joseph Lanner, both Austrian Romantic composers, played there. Vyartba Garden, Prague, Czech Republic, one of the reasons I don't recommend traveling to Prague during winter is because you will miss gems like Vyartba. This garden, on the other hand, is an exception, and it was one of the highlights of the trip. It is also less crowded than other more famous attractions like the St. Vitus Cathedral. The Vyartba Garden is a UNESCO World Heritage Site located on the left side of Prague's center, and it is open from March to October during the summer and is well worth a visit. It was established around 1720 as part of the Vyartba Palace and is one of the continent's oldest well-preserved gardens. The landscape was designed by architect Frantisek Maximilian Kanker on the site of a former vineyard. Matthias Bernard Braun created the lovely sculptures in the yard. It has a Baroque style, which is defined as a gardening style centered on symmetry and the notion of imposing order on nature. The style first appeared in the late 16th century in Italy, at the Vatican and Villa Borghese Gardens in Rome, as well as the Villa d'Est Grounds in Tivoli, mentioned previously on this list. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe to our channel for the next ones.